I'm Matt Bichard with REIT.com here in San Francisco at the Prologis headquarters for the 2014 Leader in the Light. Joining me today is Danielle Horton, founder and principal of Verdani Partners. Danielle, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Now, you recently left your role overseeing sustainability efforts at Thomas Property Groups to form your own business. Can you describe what you'll be doing at Verdani Partners? Just the existing building stock is so massive. 98% of the uh, of our building stock is structures that are already in place. Um, over 75% of those are over 20 years old and they're ready for a retrofit. Plus, in terms of what we need to do addressing climate change and carbon emissions, buildings are a really big part of that. So I think there's a tremendous opportunity in making those buildings more efficient, sustainable, more productive, and also more valuable. So our goal is, I'm a veteran in this space. I've been doing this for the past decade from the owner's side. And I know that a lot of owners, they just don't have the capacity or people that are being tasked with implementing those things have so many other things on their plate. So our goal is to be able to just be in the trenches and help those teams that are trying to implement improving their portfolio, whether it's corporate sustainability, reporting, uh, benchmarking, energy star benchmarking, or lead certifications. We want to be that resource that can be flexible and help them when they need. And we think that, uh, by providing tools and resources for them to act strategically can help them achieve like quantum improvements into efficiency and corporate sustainability much faster and co more cost effectively. And the merged Parkway Thomas Properties is one of your main clients. Can you talk about the lead volume project that you have in the works with them? We'll be doing a lead volume program for about 30 properties nationwide and the plan is to We've, we've set up a really good team to, to implement that. And the plan is to start with the properties that are already fairly efficient in CBD locations, kind of like more ready to go. And, and by doing the volume program, we can do this in a, a lot more cost effective and streamlined way. And at the same time, we will be working on continuous improvement with the rest of the portfolio. We'll be rolling out our sustainability policies across the board, even buildings that don't necessarily meet lead certification. And another exciting thing that we'll be doing is just putting together a centralized uh, tool for corporate sustainability, similar to what we had for Thomas Properties Group, that's going to allow us to just have a, a point place to share information, resources, tools, best practices, but also entice collaboration between the properties. And lastly, you mentioned you are a, a veteran of this space. So, so what do you see as sort of the, the next evolution or phase as real estate companies look to improve their sustainability efforts? In terms of highlighting some of the key trends that I feel are very important that owners that want to operate their buildings more sustainably need to be paying attention, um, starting with legislation and codes. So right now, there's just a huge push for transparency. There's like over 30 cities that are now having disclosure requirements for their energy consumption. So that's going to incentivize like owners of, it's going to reward owners that are already efficient, but also uh, penalize owners that are not there yet. The second trend is in terms of um, ratings and disclosures. So um, I think a lot of owners are being rewarded uh, and, and I, I believe they should be pursuing when appropriate doing like certifications um, like LEED or Energy Star Benchmarking, all those things. And um, so there's also a recognition reward from doing the third party verification. Um, I believe too that we're moving toward buildings as integrators, and I heard that from Chris Pike with USBC that it's no longer about a certification at some point in time, but it's about a t um, buildings is like an ecosystem. It's this timeline of activities. It's about this combination of certifications and just our benchmarking awards that make them a sustainable building. So it's like really more focusing on performance and ongoing improvement. Then the third aspect is tenant engagement. Obviously, especially with disclosure requirements, transparency becoming more prominent, I feel like engaging your tenants is no longer optional. You really need to be working with your tenants and playing that space. And then lastly is just technology in buildings. Um, I think that buildings are so far behind in terms of technological advancements. Um, this is bringing a whole set of like challenges and opportunities in ways buildings need to advance in terms of whether it's like 
you know, better building automation, switching from pneumatic to DDC, and just having being able to show real time data. Um, there's like right now in terms of managing energy consumption, a lot of information is going to be in the cloud. Um, but there's just there's just a lot of room for improvement in terms of technology that buildings need to catch up and owners need to continue to making those investments in making and in, in continue to upgrade their buildings. Great. Danielle, thank you so much for your insights. You're welcome. For more on this and other real estate news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com. Mm -hmm.